performance has been pretty tough in, in equity markets generally over the past six months and year to date. There's really been few places to hide. Uh, in Asia, Indonesia has been one of the few positive markets supported by a, a, a rosy-ish outlook for, for commodities. Uh, on that basis, we took a bit of profit from our Indonesian holdings, uh, energy distribution business called AKR, and also a hospitals group called Hermina. Uh, beyond that, we took some profits also from, from Thailand, uh, where one of our stocks there, Mega Life Sciences, has done pretty well in the healthcare space. And, and on the flip side, we have been uh, incrementally adding to markets that have been very beaten up, primarily China, where back in April we introduced two new names, uh, and now in August uh, we also introduced two new names at small positions of around 1%, one of, one of which is, is a more domestic-oriented business called Cha Cha, uh, and the other is, is a, a more export-oriented business called Kerry Logistics, listed in Hong Kong. Beyond that, we did build our position in the India's equivalent of Google Maps, uh, which is uh, a very small company, but one that's growing very fast. We participated in the IPO uh, earlier in this year uh, and was about 30 bits in the portfolio. So we've been building that up to around 1%. We have also exited a Taiwanese IT services company called eCloud Valley which is a great little business, was growing very fast, but one where disclosure and transparency was still a little bit weak. Uh, and the fact that the company was going through an equity placement, which was going to dilute shareholders like ourselves, meant that we felt uh, it was better to, to exit the business ahead of that. Uh, growth seemed to be slowing a little bit as well. Uh, and and we, we felt that we could park that cash in, in higher conviction positions. Within the, the more beaten up markets, we did switch uh, from a, a software company in Korea called Duzon Bizon into a tech hardware business that um, plays into the semiconductor space, in particular called Lino, which we talked about uh, in the past update. But beyond that, we have been sitting tight with our companies, uh, which have been doing very well. The core portfolio hasn't changed, and the top 10 holdings uh, still represent about a third of the portfolio. And again, haven't haven't really changed uh, much uh, for, the, for the course of the entire year. Uh, and and then we feel very encouraged with with the performance of, of the bulk of the companies in the portfolio, despite the tough macro environment. Performance has been quite tough on an absolute basis. The last six months, uh, the NAV of the portfolio is down about five percent, year to date about twelve percent. Um, in, in, in pound terms, that's actually been helpful. Uh, so if, if you looked at local currency performance for the stocks, it's actually been weaker than that. So a weak pound uh, has helped performance on a relative basis. Uh, and, and, and I think from a, when you look at it relative to the benchmark, you have performed in line slightly better than the benchmark. But certainly, as I, as I mentioned earlier, it's been difficult uh, market backdrop and, and, and really nowhere really to hide. I think the good news uh, is that uh, when you look at, at, at the fundamentals of the company, these businesses have actually delivered good earnings growth over the past year uh, and, and actually paid healthy dividends, including some, some very generous special dividends. And as we approached the full year, fiscal full year for the trust at the end of July, we realized that actually the income coming through our companies has been more than sufficient to, to pay the, 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 the enhanced dividend commitments that the board introduced in January, where we doubled the level of the absolute dividend for the trust. So whilst we, the board haven't decided on a dividend uh, coming up, it, it's quite likely that we're in a position that we can pay more than, than what we indicated earlier in the year. So it's so pretty encouraging from that standpoint. And, and again, I think the companies have been doing a good job in the valuations, but pretty really attractive despite the performance so far. Perhaps it's worth talking about the two initiations that we introduced in China in August. Um, one of them is a more domestic-oriented company. It's a stack business. They uh, do packaged seeds and nuts. Uh, and, and what we like about it is that they have, uh, they're vertically integrated, which means that they have uh, good control over uh, product quality and also on cost. So they, they are a cost leader and have a, a, a very good and safe product that they can sell across China 
they've got a very strong distribution network on the offline side, and they've been they've been complementing that by investing uh, in in online distribution. They've got a strong brand, and you know it's a business that benefits um, from from consumption uh, in China and, and quite insulated from more geopolitical or, or, or you know, export sort of export uh, weakness that you see at the moment uh, globally. The other introduction in, in China is actually a Hong Kong listed company called Carry Logistics. Uh, it's a very uh, well respected business in Hong Kong, very good governance credentials and, and has executed very well over the years. Uh, the company is in a more cyclical end of the market, uh, doing logistics and, and freight forwarding. What we like about the company is recently it's been taken over by the SF Group in China, which is one of the key leading logistics players in China. And we think that uh, that will help bring scale to carry logistics in freight forwarding and uh, continue to deepen uh, their, their dominant position in the U.S.-China uh, trade route. Uh, beyond that, they'll also uh, expand their network in express deliveries in Southeast Asia, which again is something that the SF Group has, have, a, have a lot of experience with. It's a bit more of a value uh, play. You know, the, the company is trading on a single digit forward price to earnings multiple uh, and has a dividend yield of about 5%. Uh, and, and, and as I said, you know, given the, the, the track record that they have in terms of delivering profitable growth, we feel quite confident that that business over, over the long term uh, will do quite well. The key differentiation of Asia Focus uh, versus other Asian equity products out there is really that small cap focus. Uh, unlike other uh, equity uh, mutual funds or trusts that are have big exposures to the likes of TSMC, Samsung, Samsung uh, Tencent, Alibaba, you know the big giants in Asia, something like Asia Focus does give you access to typically overlooked companies that are essential to Asian growth. Uh, and to global supply chains. That means that we are capturing a lot of different themes uh, that, that are, are popular, but that maybe are, are slightly cheaper than what you get when you're looking at the, uh, the crowded names in large cap space. You know, broadly speaking, we have a very diversified portfolio. We have about 60 companies at about 2% each. Uh, again, very diversified by country and sector. So when you look at Countries, our biggest market is India at about 19%, followed by Indonesia uh, and Taiwan at about 10 to 12% each. And from a sector perspective, tech is our largest exposure at about 20%, followed by industrials at 16%, and healthcare at 12%. So when you think about uh, the different drivers of those economies and those sectors, there's quite a varied range of, of businesses and and and. and and thematics that we are playing in the portfolio. Uh, this is all constructed from a bottom-up perspective, so we're not necessarily building a portfolio from a top-down uh, perspective, trying to capture these themes, but they do play out, uh, and, and, and it's something that we are uh, very aware of as we build the portfolio. But ultimately, uh, we think that Asia is in a good place long-term from a structural perspective, uh, you know, economies have been better managed economically, we feel. Inflation is, is under control. Um, and whilst China is having some, some particular uh, issues at the moment around the property sector and zero COVID policy, you know, there's plenty to be positive about elsewhere in the region. Uh, India is proving to be a, a real success story um, with resilient macro uh, drivers and, and good investment. Uh, and good growth coming out of the companies there. Southeast Asia is recovering with tourism coming back in Thailand and Indonesia benefiting from, from rising commodity prices as well. So, so we feel quite positive uh, at, at both the company level and also from a long-term perspective on, on, on the region itself and valuations at the moment are looking pretty attractive. So, you know, if you can afford to, to look through uh, the really negative headlines at the moment, uh, we, we feel quite positive about the portfolio at this point. Mm -hmm.